all right hi uh welcome back and yeah that's my intro um today we're taking a look at how we can create this um glowy colorful 3d icon arrangement in after effects using mostly vectors shape uh and some built-in lighting and camera and also incorporating some pretty neat effects as well so yeah this is gonna be a fun one and i hope you guys enjoy this uh, let's go Um, right, so in order to start up building this effect, we're gonna need maybe a vector shape since that's what we're gonna be basing our uh, 3D shapes on. So what I'm gonna suggest is, you know, unless you guys has a predetermined icon in mind that you want to turn into 3D, I'm gonna suggest some sites that uh, contains downloadable SVG files. Later you can turn to uh, vector shapes and After Effects. So Google Icon is a, a pretty popular one. Uh, it's got some good, you know, basic functional icons over here. You can search for the one that you like. Uh, yeah, predictable. If you got a really customized icons, I'm gonna suggest going into After Effects and then you know try and trace it back using the pen tool. Right, so what I'm gonna be doing is incorporating uh, Adobe Illustrator into my workflow a little bit because this is a pretty neat you know uh, vector. Um, no, there's AI in. There's actually AI in AI now. Uh, <laughs> Does this kind of generate a um, vector file for me? Oh no. Try out. No. No. <laughs> I can see the outlines. It's still loading, but yeah. Oh. No. What? I am. You got to be kidding. Uh, it's, it's still pretty rough, but you know, you can actually adjust them manually. I don't know how they're set up in the layers, so I guess it's gonna be a big mess, isn't it? Oh, they actually divided to- oh! That is sick. But still, that's pretty dystopic. Bugatti Veyron. There it is. What even is this? It's that simple, and now you gotta get a car illustration. Holy Jesus. I am astounded and at the same time disappointed of where this is headed to. <laughs> but yeah, continue with the video. I'm gonna draw out my a stylized version of my initials. Maybe something like this, like that. Pretty cursive. I already spent like half of this video on the AI. It was fun to do stuff with it, but the thought of it being used just makes me wanna wanna put a bandage on my nose and look at a holographic girl in the rain. Put this out a little bit more, and there we go, like that. So, and then I'm gonna save it as a, uh, a an Illustrator file. The Right, so now we're back in After Effects. What I'm gonna do is import that file in. Click onto the Project tab, Control I. There it is, a V logo. Double click on it and import kind composition. Um, that's all right with me. And yeah, drag it into to the com. And then I gotta. So in order to get the vectorized file of the V, I'm gonna go to the composition of the V logo. I'm gonna head over here. To the layer right click and create and then create shape from vector layer then we got this this uh shape layer over here of the thing that we just draw that uh after effects can actually interpret and then turn into a 3d layer and that's exactly what we're gonna do i'm gonna just delete this head over to composition setting try to match this composition with the outside one and then for this layer i'm gonna head over to toggle switches and modes and then uh, put on the 3D option for this layer. And that's gonna turn the entire workspace into a 3D compatible workspace. You can actually um, drag it out into V space, move it uh, around, rotate it, and most important part over here, you're gonna have to engage the uh, rendering rendering option to from classic 3D to Cinema 4D. Um, that's gonna give you another dimension. I assume. <laughs> no, never mind. 
Okay, <laughs> so the next step is pretty crucial. So we're gonna extrude out the geometry of the object. So over here, if you drop uh, down to the, all the setting, all the properties, drop down to geometry options, go to extrusion depth, and then drag it out. And then bam, we have ourselves a 3D object. Actually, I forgot a step uh, where you should be putting in a new camera. I'm gonna put it to one node and maybe 200 millimeter lens. And then for that camera, I'm gonna drag it out a little bit out in Z space. And the second thing that you need are some lights. You can use a variation of these. I usually use a point light over here. I usually use the um, the three point lighting setup to uh, light up a scene. It's a uh, pretty very basic, but give you a pretty good look. But right now, the point of our setting up a light scene over here is just to create a depth map, if you will. Uh, later on, we're going to be using uh, the displacement map effect onto this particular map. Um, we're going to try to create a scene where there's a variety of light points and dark points for the lights to uh, reflect on. So as you can see over here, maybe three lights. Are, this may be a little bit of overkill. I think we're going to stick with two lights over here. This one is going to be a little bit brighter. I'm going to drop the brightness down of this one and drag it maybe um, out to the space over here. Yeah, I think right now I'm pretty happy with this setup. It, you know, you can mess around with it even more, but uh, this is what I'm sticking with for the uh, example that we're gonna be uh, working on today. And now you can actually go in and see what you're doing with your bevel style. You're gonna be seeing a little bit of flating going around uh, on the edges of the object over here. Usually I just bring it up to maximum, bring it out too much, and then you're gonna get something that looks, that's looking like a little bit of Victorian decorative material over here. I'll just set it to maybe one, that's good. Right, so we can now get our hands on animating the scene. I'm just gonna do some pretty simple movement. I'm gonna keyframe the Y rotation property over here. Uh, if you want, if you want to replicate this, um, uh, my X rotation is at minus 23, and my Z rotation is at uh, 28. The the only thing I'm gonna be uh, keyframing is the Y rotation. So I'm gonna go from 68 over here, rotate that. Wrong way around, rotate that, rotate it this way, you know, just send from some pretty simple movement. Make it last for 10 seconds over here, put it over there, and then, you know, you got a pretty, a pretty heavy scene, but it's a pretty movement with uh, a 3D object inside of After Effects, no less. And so we're gonna treat this as if it is a, a depth map for our color. And so in order to do that, I'm gonna jump out to the outside comp, the, the comp that's containing this comp. I'm gonna call this one dead end plus map because it's gonna be used on, not only as the depth for the color, but also uh, the map for our objects. Why is it in adaptive resolution? Okay, I'm gonna be creating a new, new uh, shape layer. Uh, I'm gonna draw that in the shape of a cone like this like that what i'm gonna do is over here in the color property of the shape i'm gonna, I'm gonna put its fill from solid color into linear linear gradient i'm gonna you know just select out the color that you want this actually looks not bad then i'm gonna make this um you know this cone over here so swipe from bottom to the top and how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna go head over here to the pen behind tool take this grab this anchor point over here drag it to the end uh, the small end of the cone here. just call this cone uh, hit R to bring up the rotation property and then drag it uh, down like that I'll put a keyframe on it and then we here at maybe like um, maybe like two seconds I'm gonna drag it all the way up to the top like that and now one of the most important part of the scene i'm gonna head over here to effects and preset i put in a displacement map and boom 
put the displacement map layer onto the depth and map and then I'm gonna Ooh, I'm gonna displace it up on the horizon horizontal and vertical sides. Wow, that's it. And now we got you know we got a sort of a light gray uh, reflecting through our object based on where the um, where the heavy spot and where the light spots are on our objects. The lightest spot is where the object is you know displaced the most. The darker the the object gets over here the um the lesser this place is gonna be and when it gets pretty dark over here at these uh these point uh the value is actually gonna be reversed yeah so that that's pretty much the basis of the uh of the effect what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna want to get rid of the outside portion of the cone so i'm gonna head up to the to the track map property over here click on the pick whip and drag it to the depth plus map layer What's gonna do is gonna hide the depth map layer and also uh, restraining our layer, our cone layer to the um, to the confines of of the um, of the area of our 3D objects. Go over here and put in a blur. Uh, fast box works flat, works fine, and I'm gonna bring up the blur value over here as well as making sure that the fast block fast box blur effect goes before. The displacement map effect put some lighter uh, lighter edge onto the uh, onto the lighting of the object and by blurring up the light cone we actually open up the space and the amount of details that the light can touch first before swiping away to the other parts while making the light sweep a little bit more realistic so now that we have our basic movement over here, I think the rest is gonna go down to like you know troubleshooting a little bit of the details. Uh, so right now, as you can see, the um, the cone is starting out a little bit too far away from the object. So I'm gonna drag it, um, drag the rotation back up a little bit so that we can barely see the edges of the object, and that's gonna be a smoother smoother color swipe of the object as you can see over here there's still um, a little bit of color, rough color edges on the concave and uh, also within the details of the uh, displacement itself and that's because you know i've gotten a little bit too trigger happy with this um, displacement properties i'm gonna drag the vertical displacement down a little bit make sure it's a little bit smoother uh see where the edges are still and yeah that's looking pretty good to me awesome yeah that's looking real smooth and the good thing about this uh, effect over here is that you know you still got the depth map the logo animation here that you can still take advantage of you can maybe create another cone drag it this side and uh, this time i want it to go this way around so i'm gonna animate it to go like that uh, sort of in a clockwise manner uh, and then drag it out make sure to offset it a little bit when the other color sort of goes away uh, this one starts to appear out and it's looking really nicely blended together oh my god yes now you got a, you know you get a fancy logo opener one thing i forgot to mention uh at the beginning is that if you got a png file off an icon that you want to extrude out what you can do but i wouldn't recommend because it's not it doesn't have 100 percent fidelity to the original icon is that you can actually use a pen tool uh, to trace the icon back if you go to layer new and shape layer you can actually um, use the pen tool over here to create the shape around this uh, square uh, square object you know if you got time or you know if you use these uh rounded uh, rectangle tool over here it's gonna be more exact but right now i'm just gonna do it for you as an example i'm gonna put it uh put this shape over here i'm gonna call this uh, ae icon back and then i'm gonna put the uh, 3d option for the icon and turn on the 3d op option as well for the shape what we're gonna want to do is make sure the um position of the icon is slightly just slightly above so i'm gonna want to put it to maybe something like zero minus one um we're gonna create a new null object 
and I'm also gonna put the 3D option for the null as well. What we can do is, is actually marry these two uh, to the null object. And this null is gonna be the one that controls how this shape rotates and transforms. And the good thing about having this as a shape as a shape in the back is that you can actually extrude it. That's sort of the reason why you know you need to trace back the logo anyway, because you cannot extrude the PNG. Yeah, I wonder why After Effects don't let you do that, but yeah, that's it for uh, this tutorial on how to get this um, on how how to get this uh, you know glowing lights flowing through a 3D objects effect and After Effects. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye bye.